so let's let's start off with you then um tell me a bit about yourself kind of your, your career path and your your journey and what led you to sit in the seat that you're in now well i, I started in the printing business when i was 13 years old i had a uh, next door neighbor that had a little mom and pop print shop and uh it they were looking for extra help and it sounded a lot better than mowing lawns, which is what I was doing for money at the time. So I, I started at 13 working in a dark room, uh, doing handwork, things like that. Um, was running a press at 16, uh, decided that printing is where I wanted to be. And I, rather than going to college, I just went to work for a bigger printer and got my experience there. Um, did it pretty much forever. And then uh, it moved to Dallas in uh, 20 or in 96 and started this company in 2002 and uh, we've been just a little over 20 years now of uh, pretty slow and steady growth and um, just being a general commercial printer which is a hard thing to do these days but um, what I've always done love doing it and can't imagine doing anything else fantastic love that and tell me a little bit about um, the Voom Group as well and what's involved on a day-to-day. -day. But before before we go into the day-to-day, -day, tell me about um, a bit about the company background first and then we can move on to what an average day looks like. Well, we, we started uh, the company, my wife and I. Uh, she'd been in marketing, I'd been in printing for forever. And uh, we wanted to kind of combine those two things and be a, a full service uh, marketing services company yeah. um, that provided kind of everything under the sun so that's that's what we were um, and we've kind of continued to try and be that I think that's a little challenging these days to, to be really diverse to be a small company and be really diverse but we offer everything from graphic design uh, all different kinds of printing offset digital large format um, direct mail uh, we do some uh, promotional products and laser engraving, things like that, too. So uh, we, we're we we're not a giant company. We have about 20 employees, but we have a very diverse offering of stuff. So everybody wears a lot of hats, does a lot of things. It's never a boring day here, that's for sure. OK, so talk me through roughly what an average day looks like for Erica and, and the Boom Group as well. <laughs> well, like I say, since we're a smaller company, um, my day is different almost every day. It can be uh, anything from this morning, uh, I was helping put jobs in boxes to, uh, you know, working on our website, working on Infigo, working with customers. Um, I, I really do a lot of different things. Uh, since I kind of grew up in the printing business, I can run virtually every piece of equipment we have. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm here, there and everywhere. So it's every day is different for sure. Awesome, thank you. And you mentioned the word equipment there. That brings me nicely on to the next question. What's the technology um, in, you, that you guys utilize in house currently? And also maybe you know, building on from that, what's the technology you guys have to incorporate later on in, in the business? Um, I think, for, well, from a print technology standpoint, we've got small format offset presses. We've got HP Indigo digital presses. We've got uh, traditional toner based digital presses. Um, we, we offer a lot of unique finishing. Um, we do a lot of uh, different laminating processes and foils and uh, embossing, foil stamping, things like that. A lot of hand finishing. We do a lot of uh, launch kits and things like that. So um, our, so our equipment is, is pretty diverse too. All of the you know, traditional things you see in a print shop, but also die cutting and like say laminating. Uh, we have laser die cutters. We do a lot of uh, specialty work on our CNC cutter in our large format department, where we've got uh, large flatbed UV, roll to roll UV, latex printers, um, like you say, uh, laser engravers, um, direct mail equipment, cutters, folders, all of the normal things you see in a print shop too. So um, as far as where technology is going, um, I don't know. There's not a lot of things that I see out there right now that I don't have that I have to have more of the more of our technology uh, initiatives lately have been software related it's more about okay. workflow about using the equipment we have more efficiently and really um, we're you know we're buying a few things we're buying a new digital press uh, we just bought a laser die cutter we're, we're always investing in things for the future but um, to me more of it is 
getting to be able to use that equipment more efficiently, being able to get orders into production faster and more efficiently. And that's, you know, we reached a point where we had more front office employees than we did production employees, just because right. the work we do is so diverse. So we had to find ways to, to do that better and get jobs into production better. And that's where uh, our, our long journey of web to print and storefronts and workflow has been and that's really where i've spent most of my focus in the last couple of years is more on that technology side than on uh, the software technology side rather than the equipment technology side okay so that's quite an extensive list there of impressive hardware and as you say you guys uh, invest heavily in your in your hardware you also mentioned um, software and obviously web to print which we'll, we'll come on to in more detail in a moment how much automation do you have through all of that amazing kit that you've just listed out does it talk to each other is it connected yeah i think i think we you know over the last few months have finally reached what i consider to be kind of the holy grail of the whole system is uh, a customer can place an order on infigo and i can have a press turn on and start printing so we've automated everything from Infigo through our MIS, uh, through uh, prepress, and uh, you, you you order something on my website and it shows up at a press. A pressman gets a ticket printed by his press, and the job is off. So we've we, and, it, and it's not everything for us. We do a lot of really weird and random projects, so we can't make everything go that way. But being able to take the things that do fit that model and, and being able to offload that and automate that has, has made a huge difference for us, I think. Awesome. Okay. So I've got a few questions around that and, and this is an area that I do enjoy discussing. Would you mind sharing which MIS that you guys are using? We're using Print IQ and we're, I, I think I met Print IQ first out of all of the workflow that I use, but I think we've picked everything specifically because of the way it works together. And the way in, we, we came to Infigo uh, because of its integration with PrintIQ and, and the, it's so powerful, the, the way that integration works. I can't, it's hard to even describe to people that don't understand what that is, how powerful that can be. Um, like, for example, yesterday we had a job entered in the morning and another job entered later in, in the day and we noticed that the price was different. and. We were like, well, something happened. Something must be wrong. But nothing was wrong. One of our materials had gotten more expensive. The price changed in the Print IQ system. So the next person that placed the order automatically got the new price, which, you know, if that pro that material could be on 50 different products and we didn't have to go change the price on 50 different products, that just happens automatically. Uh, so the, the ability to make things work and then they just keep working and not have to manage them in that integration is, is pretty incredible. Thank you. That's that's a fantastic, that answer, that's a fantastic that. answer. I think Carissa will probably be nodding her head right now as well from a, another subject matter that we're working on. So thank you, Eric. <laughs> um, I think going back again over the web to print side of things, you mentioned um, you obviously you've got your kit, you got your automation. Was was that an element? Was that part of the brief when you were looking for a web to print system that you that automation um, was was something that was missing? Talk me through the um, the challenge that you guys were facing that made you look at Infigo. Well, the, yeah, the challenge was it, it just it just takes so much time to manage orders, simple orders that uh, unless you have them automated, it's hard to be competitive um, and. And, and, and just effectively get jobs through customer service and into production. Um, you know, having a, uh, I, I know it's probably the wrong word and it's probably way overused, but you know, hang, having an Amazon quality web to print site where customers can just, you know, a, an admin can go on and order business cards and can manage the proofs and, and manage all that process. Instead of that being six or eight emails back and forth with our customer, like I say, it just becomes a job and it shows up at our press and it's on its way. And we can focus on the things that are more important, the things that can't be automated and the jobs that are more difficult. And the simple things are simple and the hard things are, are simpler because we have more time to do. Awesome. Thank you. Eric. And um, did you look at many other web to print suppliers slash oh, vendors? I, when... I didn't look at many others. I looked at all others. In fact, I, I owned several before I found my way to Infigo finally. So um, I can say that I've you know, I've, I've seen a lot, I've had a lot, and really nothing compares to Infigo. Um, we, the, the, 
software I tried before in Figo was uh, a, a nightmare. And after a year of trying to make it work, we finally just gave up. And, you know, we thought it was us, which made us really feel good when we found Infigo because we realized it wasn't us. It's not that hard. Um, you just have to find the right software. And that, that is a challenge. And, and I think that is different for everybody too. It's, you know, Infigo is a great fit for me. I think, uh, I think it can work for most anybody, but I think you really do have to look at, you know, what it is that you're trying to accomplish with it and make sure that you match that up. That was the thing that was hard for us to learn. I think over time is understanding all those objectives, uh, pretty clearly in the beginning makes it easier to figure out where you're going with it. Okay, so that's that's an interesting point. We have a theory right now, especially in, in North America, that there's this um, uh, a series of, of printers, PSPs like yourself, who are what we call second generation web to print users. And in essence, they are PSPs that have had web to print over the last 10, 15 years. They can, they can see the value of, of web to print. They, they, they know that they, there's, there's issues with maybe a, a particular vendor, um, or maybe there's been an issue with how they were onboarded or how they, they understood the process. And they're coming back into the market now to, to re, repurchase web to print. Um, would you say that's something, is that something you were in that time when you came to Infigo? Were you that second generation web to print user where you had experienced the other vendors and thought, hey, look, we know this could work for our business, but we just haven't quite, you know, got the right fit? Yeah, I think I think that's definitely us. I would even probably say we're, uh, Infigo is our third generation of web to print. Um, we, you know, we started with something that, uh, you know, a long time ago when not a lot of people were doing web to print, I think. Uh, and it was just really challenging. And I think we uh, approached it the wrong way. Um, we tried to build a branded storefront for every single customer that we had. Um, and we had a hard time identifying the right kinds of customers for that. It's, it's not for every customer. Um, you know, I think, I think it's just a, a process where you, you kind of have to grind it out a little bit and understand what works and what doesn't. Um, I could probably listen to smarter people now and get more of that information. But at the time, you know, I think we were, we were trying to figure out things that uh, there weren't a lot of people trying to figure out. But, um, and I think, the, you know, for us, yeah, definitely this is our third generation. Uh, we, we learned a lot in the first generation. I think we had a pretty clear goal and knew what we wanted to do with our second uh, piece of software. It, it was just a really a struggle to get it done. It, it was just hard to make that software do what it needed to do. And uh, not having the integration was a killer. I think, I think not being able to get it integrated was the thing that finally made us just you know give up and, and look for something that made where everything could work together and that's that's what to me really unlocked it all and made it simple and uh the the, the thing about infigo that makes it work i think and makes it stick on this third generation is that we don't have to build a, a complete custom website for every customer we we have one website we do have that for certain customers there are people that that works for we have several of them but uh every customer, every Joe the plumber doesn't have to have a brand of website. They just need a place to be able to go and order their cards. So we have one website where a user logs in and they see their stuff. That's actually what we even call it. It's your stuff. So <laughs> uh, we, we keep it simple. And uh, so if, if somebody needs a, a business card template, we have that done in a couple of hours and not a couple of weeks. And they're off to the races. And just we've just really simplified the process of thinking have between the integration within with print iq and with the uh, switch uh, making all that work together it was just kind of a no-brainer for us so it's it's finally made it work the way we've always thought it could work okay so you just you just slipped a word in there eric so we got infigo print iq and in focus switch is that the free yeah. main integration that's yeah. the main. There's there's a lot yeah. of other things that seem to plug into it. There's a lot of uh, apps that that we use along the way, and uh, there's there's always like little things that we want to be able to do that we can't do. And I use uh, Make.com as a uh, to to access uh, some of my APIs just to to do things that are uh, that are a little more challenging. I'm not an IT guy. I'm not a web design guy. Uh, we don't really have those skills here. So we've always tried to do this on our own uh, and build it ourselves. I, it, it never made sense to me to offload that to somebody else to build it if we can't use it when they're done. So yeah. I always wanted to, to understand it from the ground up and, it, and it's a process and that's 
it's yep. a decision that may not be the best one for everybody, but for me, that's just the way I had to do it. So, okay, so that's a really interesting point. In terms of the software usability, you're saying that you don't have an in-house developer or development team, and you do most of the of the configuration. Would, would you, do you find the back end of the software fairly intuitive, fairly user friendly? It is. There, there's a lot there um, because there are so many ways that you can do things. Um, the the versatility breeds a lot of options, and so there's a lot of things to understand. But once you get get your head wrapped around it, and uh, that I think that's the other thing that makes Infigo work, where we struggle with other software is uh, support is. Uh, the support at Infigo is like no other company. I, I told uh, them the other day, I wish I could make all of my companies that I work, software companies I work with be like Infigo support. It's unbelievable how uh, responsive and, you know, e even if it's something that it can't do, there's always, there's, they're so helpful in trying to find ways to, to work around or just find a solution, find a way to make it work. And so far we've been able to do that with everything. So. Um, I've lost track of what the original question no, that's was. Fine. That that's fine. Uh, that's fine. That's lovely feedback. Thank you so much for that. And we will feed that back to the team. That's, I really appreciate that. Um, you, you mentioned support. Let's talk about the onboarding process and the training process. I think let's let, let's be you know cards on the table. Let's talk about the good, the bad, the ugly. What was and let's let's go opposites. Let's start with what could have been better um, for you. And, and then, now this isn't necessarily for us to learn as well as to share in terms of a case study. But I think it's the fact that you're being so open and um, positive as well. We would welcome any constructive feedback. What was the what could be done better in terms of the onboarding for for you guys if you turn the clock back? Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a hard thing to answer because I just didn't really have a lot of uh, negative uh, things. They're just, they're, they're, I, I think we were able to move at our pace. Everything was there the, between uh, the knowledge base, all the YouTube videos. There's just, there, there's, there's so much stuff. Um, we just never had a problem finding an answer. And if, if, if we just got tired of looking for the answer uh, or couldn't find it quickly enough, you know, we would engage service and, uh, you know, it, it got resolved very quickly. So uh, it's hard for me to find a thing to do better. I think um, Sam, I think when we started, Sam was pretty new. Uh, he's been, he, he trained us and I think we were one of the first people he trained. Um, I don't know. I, I, I have a hard time finding negative things to say, unfortunately. That's good to hear. And, and, you, and you referenced um, Sam in the YouTube. So you're, you're an avid user of uh, Infigo Academy then? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, w you know, we went through it all pretty heavy in the beginning to, to kind of get our feet wet, but it's a great place to go back to just because, yeah. you know, like I say, I jumped from Infigo to Switch to uh, running equipment for a few days and then somebody would be out for a week and, you know, I'm in production for a week and then you have to jump back in and it's, you know, you know you can do it, you don't remember exactly how, so it's nice to be able to have that information really organized and where you can get back to it and can refresh your memory, so. And that's that's why it's there. It's on demand. So fantastic. Yeah. What are your long term goals utilizing the, the Infigo platform? And we've got five areas here to to, uh, to challenge you with. The first one would be new customer. And what's the path for a new customer on the Infigo platform? Well, that's what, what we hope to start doing with Infigo next is uh, if so far, well, our first phase was to try and get all of the customers that we currently work with that have work that fits web to print set up. And that's where we are now. I think we've got pretty much everybody that we're currently working with that has uh, storefront needs, all their stuff is there. So our next challenge is to try to start to use Infigo to attract new business. Um, we don't have a huge sales organization. I'm mostly our sales organization. Um, we're we're very word of mouth, um, but we've we've had a lot of success with uh, web marketing in the past when nobody else was doing it. It got a little bit crazy, and, and we stopped doing it um, because we didn't have the tools to be able to sell online. It didn't make sense to market online as an online printer. Um, we. We're still not ever going to be an online printer, but I think that we can have a lot of products online. I think it's great to be able to, to let our current customers 
Bob the plumber that just has business cards can go to that same website and he sees, oh, maybe I want a banner stand or I want to be at a trade show or something. So all of those same things are there as, you know, uh, as a storefront, they're available. Even if they just pick up the phone and call us and go, hey, I need a banner stand. I don't know how to order this. Uh, it's still there. They at least know that we're doing it. We're putting it in front of them all the time. So okay. we, we want to use it as a tool to attract new customers. We want to, we're just starting to go back to search engine marketing and uh, and trying to send traffic to those sites. So it's, it's we're relearning that side of uh, the internet. And so far it's been pretty successful. We've gotten uh, several new customers this week. We actually redesigned our main just informational website and put it on Infigo. Uh, and we're using one of our sites just because it's so easy wow. to manage our wow. website. So uh, wow. even though we don't conduct any business there, maybe we will at some point it's there if we want to, but um, uh, it, it's just so easy. You know, we, we always had it on WordPress and like this is WordPress is hard now. Okay. I just want to put everything on Infigo. <laughs> okay, so you heard it here first then. So what you've just said is you moved your main brochure company website off of WordPress onto the Infigo platform. Yeah, yeah, just because it was easier for us to manage at this point. Love that. Fantastic. I mean, that's case in point for the developers and the hard work that they've put in on the back end. Um, you, you mentioned seven new customers this week, which is fantastic to hear. What's the mix um, between B2B and B2C right now? Give me give me a bit of a flavor of, um, say, three of your top B2C sites. Don't have to give any names or anything. And then uh, three B2B sites. Well, we, we do not focus on B2C at all. We don't even really want B2C business. I mean, we, we would take it, we, you know, we're happy for, um, and I don't know, I, I think that B2C is kind of a, a different thing in our business. There's, you know, our, all of our consumers kind of are businesses, or, or that's definitely who we target. We don't, yeah. we're not looking for somebody that wants one coffee mug to give as a Christmas gift for their nephew. That's just not our business. We're we're printers for business. So we, we target businesses. Um, so uh, we, we have a lot of customers in, in all kinds of industries and all kinds of size ranges that um, are conducting business with us through Infigo. Only a few of them, like I say, kind of have their own branded site. And okay. and most of those are for specific reasons. One of them is a print broker. So they use it uh, so that they have their own identity, but the, but the work just comes directly to us. Uh, that's been pretty successful. Uh, so that's one branded site. Um, you know, where else it's a branded site is, uh, you know, somebody just has enough business for it to make sense for them to have their own place. They don't want to be bogged down with the other things. So we're open to doing that, but it's only a few, you know, a, a big group, uh, a property management group that has a bunch of apartment complexes, that type of customer works great for having their own branded site because all of their individual uh, communities can go on and order, see their individual products. That works really well. But everybody else just goes to our main or one website. So wow. we probably have 30, 40 customers now that are just ordering through our, our main single website. So we don't, I mean, unfortunately, you guys probably want to sell more uh, B2, B2B sites, but we just don't see the need for it unless you really have a lot of business and pushing a lot of work through. You just get on the same website that everybody else does. I think um, I think like it's it's not one size fits all, is it? It's a tailor-made solution, and you tailor it yourself to what fits your business and your and your customers and your and your model. Um, that's been fantastic, and honestly, I cannot thank you enough um, with with that feedback. I have two questions for you. Um, what would you say to somebody who's considering purchasing a web to print platform? What would you um, what advice would you give? That's tough. That's, there's probably a lot of advice. Um, I, I think it would, I'd have to know where you're starting from, um, you know, where you are in that journey. Um, I, I think you have to really consider uh, the amount of time that it's gonna take. Uh, even with a great product like Infigo, uh, I spent an incredible amount of time just thinking about how I wanted it to work even, you know, understanding the direction we wanted to go. It took, it took a lot of work to just to understand what we wanted to do, much less how to do it. Um, not having any of those uh, skill sets. Uh, the, the previous software we used, we did have to learn to write HTML. We did have to be able to code. Um, that was really challenging. Um, 
If you don't have somebody that has that skill set, I would say definitely don't buy software that requires you to write code. Um, we learned a lot and it's been great that we did because it's made a lot of things easier, um, being able to use APIs and things like that. But, um, you know, I think you have to either, you have to make a decision in the beginning about how you're going to do it. Are you going mean, to, you guys have, have since introduced a lot of new tools and a lot of new ways to offload that work and your professional services works a lot differently than that used to work, I think. Um, so I would probably be more open or I would probably advise people not to go the route that I went and try to learn everything. I would probably, uh, you could probably get up to speed faster by letting you guys do the work and that's much more affordable now than I think it used to be uh, just because of the way you guys have it built. So yeah. I don't know. I think you have to look at the whole picture. What do you want to do from front to end? And I think it's important to look at the end when you're looking at the beginning because if those things can't connect and if you can't automate from the web to print into your workflow, then I think you're fighting a losing battle. So I think you have to really think it all the way through before you start. I think it's a you know it's a big deal for a small company like us, uh, and I think you have to have that all working together. Or like I say, it just it just doesn't make sense. That that was our challenge. Is you know we have things working here, things working here. At least call it islands of automation. Um, that's, yes, it's it's just tough. It, it's yeah. a hard it's a hard way to go. And um, and I don't I don't like vendors that force me into only talking to their software. I want everything, I, because we're so diverse, we do so many different things. I, I need to be able to send jobs to a large format UV printer and a laser engraver. And, you know, I need things that are very open and can communicate with each other. So that's been the, the best part about that combination of Print IQ and Figo and Switch is I can, I can do anything with it. Yeah, and, and, and like I said, both of our partners and we've been working with both now since, ooh, I wanna say 2018 um has has the guests and i just think they're both fantastic companies chris and i have a great relationship with them focus we we we, we travel the world with those guys and print iq it well i mean they were the first cloud-based mis they were the first ones to put it in the cloud i mean they're fant you know fantastic systems so um yeah big fans um thank you so much eric as well do you have anything you want to you want to talk about while we're on the call or anything we can do for you at all no, I, can't. I hear there's more things coming for Print IQ. I can't wait. I, can't. Yes. I, I yes. think I have some ideas about what some of those things are, so we're very excited about that. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know, you know, sometimes it's hard to keep up with what you guys are doing so much, it's hard to even keep up with it all sometimes. So I, can, <laughs> yeah. I think I, <laughs> yeah. I, I I do things for a while and then I have to focus on other directions and I, I kind of have to come back to it and go, okay, well, where are we now? What are we doing now? And I mean, um, the, best, so, the best thing to do is Sam sends out a, like a monthly <laughs> email that kind of summarizes. Those, those are like gold because yeah. they basically just give you the headline level of, you know, this month in Figo and you can just quickly catch up. And it's like like getting the news on your phone in the morning, just catching up on the headlines. It's it's a bit like that. But yeah, we're, we're really lucky. Our development team are pushing stuff out all the time and um, it's exciting. And as a marketing department, we can't keep up with with all the good stuff, which is, which is great. But yeah, I mean, Crystal will tell you as well, it's hard work. Um, yeah, and sure. um, yeah. Well, it's a, you know, that's the contrast from where I was before. I, I had the other software for a year. I did. I never got a single email. I never got it. There was not a single change in the software. It wasn't, you know, nothing. And it, and it was really hard to get any kind of support at all. So yeah, uh, it's it's a night and day difference. So. OK, well, that's great to hear. I'm going to pass all this on because I think it's fantastic to hear it. Thank you so much. Have a, have a great day. Um, hopefully the sun carries on shining in Texas. And, and uh, thank you again. Really appreciate your time. Thanks a lot. Great talking to you. Bye for now.